Hello everyone, this is Bob Browner with Community Coronavirus Update number 61. Today we'll talk about school safety issues, uh, some updates on the COVID vaccine rollout and uh, problems with Nebraska falling behind, unfortunately. So uh, I've had multiple people email me this article with questions about, well, are schools safe? Can we bring all the kids back? What does this say about the CDC and the New York Times? Uh, while at the same time, I've also had people email me this article about from Wall Street Journal saying that Europe's closing its schools again. What's going on? Are, is our schools safe? Are they not safe? Uh, the answer, of course, is you got to read the whole article. So the headlines uh, may lead you to one conclusion, but you really need to look at the substance of the article and look at what the factors are they're talking about. So one email I had yesterday said, what say you, Dr. Bob? How soon can we get all kids back in school? To, the an to which I answered, and this is literally my uh, reply, uh, typos and all, uh, that there are some key things. One, schools can, keyword can reopen, if, keyword if, precautions are taken. So if the right precautions are there, of course schools should be open. And for the most part, almost every school in the United States should be open at least partially. So the other thing is this all kids. I don't think you can bring all kids back to a lot of schools because of local factors. And so for example, our high schools are designed for 1,850 kids. Should we have 2,300 kids in our high schools in Lincoln? No, because one of the key precautions is de-identification de uh, until we can prove that the other things are safe. And so, so can we get all kids in Lincoln public schools back to school full time? No, we can get them all part time. Uh, but not all full-time. Uh, the other thing the article talked about, though, is we also need to make sure our communities prioritize bars and restaurants and youth under education. Unfortunately, we, we keep overly uh, prioritizing bars and restaurants and not prioritizing education. So the schools should be last to close. The bars should be the first to close. But unfortunately, we've had that backwards through most of the pandemic. Uh, despite all that, Lincoln Public Schools has opened uh, the option for uh, seniors to come back five days a week if they choose to. Uh, this will bring up our density just a little bit, but not a a lot. Uh, the other thing is to maintain safety. The other thing the article talked about is, is school-based testings, which we still don't have widespread in Nebraska. So my biggest frustration with uh, our Nebraska Department of Education and Health and Human Services is they still have not made on-site testing readily available across for districts to, to make sure that their, their uh, schools are safer. Uh, hopefully we'll have this in the next few weeks though, however, uh, but still we're, we're behind on that. Um, the other thing you like, I keep telling people, well, what are our rates? So our rates uh, so that Wall Street Journal article about European schools closing, well, that's because Europe is having worse outbreaks than us right now. So here's Lancaster County. Uh, we had a near disaster and back in November. We've had dramatic lowering of rates. We're in the 30 to 40 range, which is a heck of a lot better, but still out of control spread. So I don't know why we're blue or orange or whatever we are. We're still out of control, what, no matter what the politicians say. But we're not near as bad as the Europeans right now. Uh, so, for example, uh, we would be on this map right here, we'd be about 30 to 40 range. Ireland is all the way up to 130 a few weeks ago. And so uh, you can see a lot of the European countries are out worse, are out more out of control than the United States is actually. And so what you do is partly determined on your local factors. So just because Europe is doing something doesn't mean all of the United States should be do something. You need to be looking at your local rates to decide how good or bad things really are. And so what happened in Ireland is uh, they were doing a great job, but unfortunately uh, they opened opened up for uh, Christmas and New Year's and the Irish celebrated a lot in the bars apparently and at homes and had a huge outbreak. But they, of course they're getting it under rapid control again though too. Uh, so again, you need to look at who's doing well and it varies from country to country, state to state, county by county. And so who are your A, B, and C students? So uh, overall fatality rate, this is your, your mar this is your final test, your final grade for who's got it right and who's got it wrong. Like I keep saying public health, dead not dead is the ultimate trump card here. So although the United States has done a horrible job, we actually haven't done the worst. There's a lot of countries like the United Kingdom and Belgium who've done far worse than us, actually. So, so U.S. has done a bad job, but not the worst job. Uh, so essentially anyone over 100, they're your C students or D students. Your B students are people in the sort of the 60, 70 range, which is going to be Ireland and Germany. And if we had done as well as Germany and Ireland, we'd have about half as many dead people. We have another 200,000 Americans alive and well right now that we don't have because we did such a bad job. Now, those are the B students. The A students are Norway and Japan. If we had Japan level, we'd have 400,000 fewer dead Americans. So we should be turning to not the quote the Europeans as a whole, we should say, who's the A students, Norway and Japan? What are they doing that we can write? We don't want to copy United Kingdom because they're actually even worse than us. Uh, the same thing can be said about the, in the United States, that there's a huge difference. I think New York, uh, I think they can be given a little bit of a pass for extenuating circumstances. They were hit first. The Dakotas had plenty of time to prepare, and now they've almost caught up to New York. So here are your failing students, your D-minus students. 
uh, your, your B students are, I guess, Nebraska, not too bad, California, Colorado, half as bad as these others, but still not great. Your A student is Maine. Uh, and of course, even within Nebraska, we have variation. Lancaster County's, I would say, maybe a B plus student, not an A like Maine, but a B plus, whereas the rest of the state probably be nine a C plus. And if the rest of the state had done what Lincoln had done, they'd have, we'd have 745 fewer dead people. Now, if we did Maine, we'd have over a thousand fewer dead people. So this is the ultimate judge of who's the A, B, and C students. So copy who's doing it right, not just any people you like because you like Europeans or don't like Europeans. Uh, Nebraska, we started out great with vaccination. Unfortunately, we've fallen all the way down to number 25 as of this morning. We did a great job uh, getting our hospital folks and some nursing homes vaccinated, but when we moved to the next stage, it turned, unfortunately, there appears to be been no real plan in place. So, and so we're rapidly falling behind, unfortunately. Uh, looking at the state's numbers this morning, they're claiming that it's a distribution to the state problem. Uh, that is part of the problem, but that's only half the problem. We actually have, according to the, the website, 221,000 doses in Nebraska, of which only 142,000 have been given. So we have almost 80,000, 78,000, if you go by the math, that are sitting in freezers. Uh, we're at vaccinating an average of about 4,700 daily. We actually have a 17-day supply sitting in freezers that could be in arms. And taking 17 days to go from freezer to arm is ridiculous. This should be measured in a couple days, not a couple weeks. Uh, so by the time when a vaccine gets to the state, it should be in arm within three to five days. Uh, so I would propose a new accountability metric for the state. Vaccine backlog of less than seven days. We can't control how long it takes to get to the state, but once it's here, we ought to have it in an arm within seven days. Uh, problems with our current plan, it's overly centralized based on this registration system that's been built from scratch. I don't know why we're reinventing that wheel. Uh, that uh, Having an online registration system means that we're actually going to worsen the disparities we already have. So why are we focusing on that? Uh, and still, there's no involvement of physicians or in the community or ACOs, which is driving me crazy. Uh, you know, uh, some people are overly stuck on this. Oh, it has to, we have to reserve a second dose. And most experts are saying, no, we should not be reserving all those second doses. Uh, really good discussion on the pros and cons of that second dose and timing uh, with this Howard Bachner interview of both uh, Paul Offit and Robert Wachter. Highly encourage if you really want to go dive deep dive into it. Uh, I don't think we want to wait three months for that second dose, but if that second dose is a week or two late, it's not that big a deal. And I think some bureaucrats were overly obsessed with this reserving the second dose, and that's part of the problem. Uh, part of the problem is they're not involving physicians to understand this better. It's being run by bureaucrats, unfortunately. Uh, we already know in the state who does it well, and like I keep saying over and over again, the Medicare accountable care organizations, they literally take care of the majority of Nebraskans. These are the nine. Uh, the numbers are public, so you can see who does it well and who doesn't do it well when they do other vaccinations. Uh, influenza vaccination is the best example. It's not exactly like what we're doing, but it's pretty close, and you can see who does it well. If you're here in Lincoln, Nebraska, there are three physician networks. One Health Nebraska ACO is where I work. This is the largest of the networks. The second largest is Bryan Health's, which is this one. And the third largest is Catholic Health Initiatives. They're the TPN Health Partners. Most people don't recognize the names, but you would recognize the clinics. So One Health Nebraska, where I work, these are the clinics that are part of One Health Nebraska. They, uh, if you live in Lincoln, there's a better than 50% chance that we take care of you and your family. And so these are all the clinics. And so alphabetical order, if you go to one of these clinics, you can look at them and that, that's who we are. So we can do this. And actually one of us is doing this. So Blue Stem Health is a federally qualified health center. They've already had their vaccine. It's the Moderna vaccine and they are giving it to their patients. And I was one of the patients uh, vaccinated there two weeks ago. They're doing it just fine. So this, yes, there are some freezer issues and logistics things, but a clinic, a decently run clinic has no problems giving a vaccine and Blue Stem's already proving that they can do it. Most of these other clinics could be giving the vaccine as well. We need to reduce the resistance so we can get this vaccine. Uh, in Omaha, who's the best in Omaha? Well, here's the three physicians, three of the physicians that network's doing the best in Omaha. Midwest Health Coalition, Nebraska Health Network, and Think ACO. Midwest Health is a bunch of independent doctors. Nebraska Health Network is uh, University of Nebraska and Methodist. Who would you involve? Well, their chief medical officers and presidents, these are the doctors who should be part of the Omaha plan. I don't know if they are because I'm not in Omaha. Uh, Mike Romano, Josette gordon Smith, uh, Steve Williams, they should be at the table helping plan this out because they know how to vaccinate people. Look at their performance numbers. Uh, so again, the problem is we still have a lot of disorganization in Nebraska. I wish they would bring us all together because we, we all know who each other are. I don't know why we can't meet together. Uh, plus some of us have been vaccinated anyway, so there's no reason for us not even to be in the same room together when we have these meetings. Uh, herd immunity. So another question, you know, how, how, what about kids? If we're going to get 78, 75, 85% of people vaccinated, that's going to be hard if we don't vaccinate kids too. The kids could be a reservoir. What are we going to do? Uh, well, there's some uh, stuff coming out. So 
Uh, right now, the, the Pfizer vaccine is produced, uh, approved down to age 16. Uh, the de-escalation studies for younger people are already be doing, so a good uh, update for uh, your local epidemiologist. Uh, what we do is they're called de-escalation trials. We, we always, we never experiment on children and pregnant women first. We always do them last. We start with the healthy young adults first and then move on. And so now that we know that it's been safe, it's uh, the vaccines have been given to over 20 million people already. Uh, yes, there are a few rare side effects, and unfortunately, they make a headline every time they happen, but still out of 20 million, really this has been a very very safe vaccine so now they are doing studies on children and they'll start with 12 to 15 and work their way younger uh, as long as they keep getting good results um, we, we're going to have to consider vaccinating children because just like we do with every other vaccine so this good article from New England Journal talking about the history of uh, both measles but they also go into polio and rubella and so getting a vaccine is not an individual choice and people need to get over that so rubella vaccination would be a great example uh, rubella is not a risk to children why do we vaccinate uh, why are we making children get vaccinated rubella because of the birth defects rubella costs in some pregnant women so we're vaccinating those children in the school mainly to protect the protegnant teacher to prevent birth defects so if you are pro-life i don't know how you can be against vaccination because rubella saves a lot of babies and so uh so we we need to vaccinate children because they are often a reservoir for infections whether it be measles polio rubella whatever the same thing is going to be an issue for uh, coronavirus uh, now basically we have to, to reduce fatalities we're going to focus on the older folks first and so by the time uh, we would get, maybe even consider getting kids if it's already be summer so we won't, we won't have them in the school so this is something we have to we'll sort out probably by fall uh, last thing i want to talk about is trusted sources of information so i still it's baffling to me the number of people that forward around misinformation uh, so where is it so quit forwarding stuff quit looking at headlines if it's doesn't they seem to make sense ignore it unless a couple things are there uh, I like this local epidemiologist so the last one I saw was this World Health Organization document that people were, were forwarded uh, city councilmen actually have they they all got back uh, forwarded this uh, this document claiming a quote that you know the PCR tests are wrong and this is all blown out of proportion the the actual email if you actually go to that who document it's obvious whoever was sending these emails had no idea what the who document actually even said uh, so look at this and say okay who's really writing this email do they even know what they're talking about uh, other things she likes to cover which i like the way she just always puts things very short and sweet double ma double mass yes masks work if you wear two it's probably better so if you want to wear two masks wear two masks uh, the merc pulling out some people are like oh my god this vaccine failed well that's because that's a good example of the system working. They did tried this vaccine and it didn't work, so it didn't get approved as opposed to the vaccines that did work, which did get improved. So this is literally the system working the way it is supposed to. Why the anti-vax movement is pulling on this, I don't know, other than of course, well, you know what they want to say. So they're picking and choosing the, the, their data just like they're picking and choosing using Bible verses sometimes. Um, other sources, so one source of information, uh, I, I don't like some uh, sources of information as far as how it's presented. So we created this HealthyNebraska.org site so you can look at the data yourself and play with it yourself. Uh, but part of the reason we do this, and Ted usually has these updated every morning at 8 a.m. with the latest stuff. One, of course, uh, this uh, mortality, again, showing that Lancaster County is the A student, maybe uh, Omaha is the B student, the rest of the state, uh, state is the C student. So this is mortality. Uh, at the end of the day, dead, not dead, who's doing the best? And unfortunately, rural Nebraska may pass, pass Grand Island Hastings Kearney in the next few weeks, uh, unfortunately. Uh, we also put it so that you can look at it by county. So one of the problems with Omaha is Omaha is covered by two different health departments with two different counties. So you'd have to look at both sites or you could go to our site and click on both Douglas and Sarpy combined and see what the numbers look like. Also, if you're in outstate Nebraska, you could look at your county and all the surrounding counties and you can pick and choose. And so we've tried to make this interactive because like I said before, public health decisions need to be based on local data, not based on what's happening in Europe. So this is a way for you to look at your own local data. Uh, other sources of information, how do I stay up to date? I actually go to three podcasts. I follow Public Health on Call. Uh, they're usually short, 10 to 15 minute, uh, usually one or two a day. That's why I listen to an elliptical trainer. Uh, Michael Ostrom's update usually comes down on Thursdays. It's a longer one, but it's very in-depth. He's very sharp. Uh, and then uh, the latest one that I've been following with is, are the conversations with Dr. Bachner that are uh, related to coronavirus, which I talked about earlier. Uh, so these are the places I go. So if you want to stay up to date, quit reading the news. Instead, follow these podcasts. You'll get a lot better uh, and much more in-depth and more accurate. The other thing I'd say, uh, experts should have two of these things behind their name. If they don't have these behind their name, I would treat that with a grain of salt and definitely don't forward it. Uh, MD, MPH, and PhD. Michael Ostrom has an MPH and a PhD. Uh, Public Health on Call, Josh Sharfstein at uh, Johns Hopkins. He has an MD and an MPH, just like James Lawler, just like Ali Khan. Most of the experts have two of these three, not just one. And if they don't have those, I'd, I'd you know, always take that information with a grain of salt. 
so last, uh, expertise and empathy. So I talked about this Harvard Business Review article. Do, if you care about people, that's the empathy. If you don't care, you don't care about saving lives, unfortunately. I'm worried about our political leadership at multiple levels. Uh, I think we're doing a little bit. I do think Biden, whether you like him or not, he at least is an empathetic guy, and he is bringing in the experts. And so we have so many experts. We literally have so many nation-leading experts in Nebraska, yet we don't use them. Uh, and so that's still my biggest frustration. Uh, we still have the possibility of keeping Nebraska deaths below 2,000, although we're getting a little behind. I'm, I'm worried that next month we will cross that 2,000, unfortunately. Uh, but like the summary from that article last week, you know, we should immediately be more aggressive about wearing masks and distancing. Uh, we need to vaccinate people as soon as we can. Uh, until everybody's vaccinated our numbers wear, drop, you're going to have to keep wearing that mask. So just because you get a vaccine doesn't mean you can stop wearing that mask. Uh, so hopefully uh, this is helpful to you. Uh, usual disclaimer, this is my opinion, not necessarily everybody else here, but they're, they're pretty well supported. And of course, all the articles I'm citing there are in the notes section of the YouTube video. So go down there and click it if you want to have more reading.